Now, along with death is also reflection of impermanence. Except in change in, and uncertainty. So as we reflect on life, we come to realize that everything in this life is impermanent. Usually we plan our lives, organize, arrange everything, and keep things as safe as, and secure as possible, but yet our insecurity gets blown away when impermanence takes place in an unexpected way. Then we have no idea how to cope because we have not planned for it. When you realize how everything is impermanent, what does it teach you? Let go of grasping. Let go of grasping. You understand? Because grasping is the source of pain. In the Tibetan Book of Living, I, I gave one example, which I thought was a bit silly, but people found it very, very helpful. So I'll share that with you. Now, for example, okay, normally we grasp, you know, like this one. We grasp, we grasp because if you let go, we lose. The original idea of grasping is, is a, it's, it's a valid because you want to grasp because you don't want to lose. However, when you really grasp, I mean, especially if you grasp your fist very tightly, what happens? It's very painful <laughs> to the grasper. But not only that, sometimes life is not so solid or substantial. It's like water, like air. You cannot, you know, water, for example, you cannot squeeze. It escapes between your fingers. Like air, for example. But then is there a way? How can we let go and still not lose? If we can do that, that would be the best way to do. And there is a way. There is a way. Like that, instead of grasping like this, you can open like this and, yeah, still have it. In fact, when you open that, you can hold... Hold the whole space, whole sky you hold also. Because really the main thing is grasping is the source. In the teaching of Buddha, one of the first things he said is the root cause of all our suffering is the grasping at the false view of ourselves. Remember. So impermanence shows us the futility of grasping. So I tell you the main point first, and then I give you supply of the details. You got it? That makes it easier, so you're not lost. Now, along with death is also reflection of impermanence, except in change in, and uncertainty. So as we reflect on life, we come to realize that everything in this life is impermanent. Usually we plan our lives, organize, arrange everything, and keep things as safe as, and secure as possible, but yet our insecurity gets blown away when impermanence takes place in an unexpected way. Then we have no idea how to cope because we have not planned for it. So if we wish to secure a plan we need to prepare on a deeper level to find an inner refuge. When you have that inner refuge, even though everything around you falls apart, there is something inside you that never gives up on you and never lets you down. That is what the teachings provide. Often, you see, I ask myself the question, why is everything impermanent? Why is everything impermanent? Why is everything impermanent? When you ask that question, you get one answer. Reason why? Because everything is impermanent is because it's like that. <laughs> In fact, impermanence is life. Life is impermanent. 
the discontinuity is the part of a fundamental continuity. For example, if a watch doesn't tick or move or change, it's not working, it's dead. If your heart is not beating, constantly changing, you're dead. In fact, it is the change that keeps life alive and provides us with opportunity to change. Most important of all, what impermanence teaches us is to let go of attachment, which only brings pain and suffering. By the way, love is not attachment. Often, love is spoiled by attachment, over-attachment. You understand? When you really have love, really love, love is giving. Love is thinking of the other. You understand? Love is letting go. But holding in that way, letting go, but in holding and loving, caring that way, is what love is. And not attachment, which is the cause of suffering. Once we can accept impermanence is the very nature of life, that everyone suffers, including ourselves, at the hands of change and death, then letting go becomes only natural thing to do. In fact, the only thing that works. In fact, there's a very famous story. Uh, during the time of Buddha, there was a woman called Krishna Gotami. She lost her only child. She was completely grief-stricken. She couldn't accept his death. And she went everywhere asking if you can bring the child back to life. She went weeping and asking everyone. Some people consoled her, tried to help her. Others mocked at her. Finally, someone said, if anyone can help you, it would be Buddha. So he went to Buddha and asked, would you, can you bring my child back to life? Buddha said, I can. But you have to bring me a, a handful of mustard seed that comes from a house that has never experienced death. And she was quite elated. She, ah, there's a hope. So she went around asking, went everywhere. Wherever she went, oh, there's, there's always been death in the family. My grandfather died, my mother just died. There's so many deaths. And she went and went and went and went by seeing that he saw that everyone suffered at the hand of death. Began to realize the universality of the death. Because before Ibuba said, okay, that's not possible, she, it'd be too, she's too kind of, I know, her grasping is too strong. You know, you understand? She would not be able to learn. So Buddha skillfully. And then, then she took the body of the child to the Kano ground and then came back to Buddha saying, you know, I've, you know, I've I've learned what you taught me now, please teach me. And then she became one of the close disciples of Buddha. So then when you really accept that, then our attachment to our grief is loosened and impermanence becomes a consolation, bringing us peace, confidence, and fearlessness. Like for example, uh, you see I came out from Tibet as a refugee. I was born in Tibet, came out as a refugee, uh, really. But I've had a, quite an incredible life, actually. It was uh, in the lived in, you know, my life is really an example of permanence. I was living east of Tibet in a very great monastery. This great master, Jamin Kensi, who was the greatest master of Tibet, master of all the masters, who was too destined to become the teacher of his own dilemma, but he passed away before he could continue giving teachings to him. So I was brought up him by him like his own son. And then there were so many... Extraordinary, I was witness to extraordinary, many, many great masters, and extraordinary, you see, life. But then everything changed. We had to escape as refugee and came to India. And then later also, in 1959, many, many Tibetans escaped, really, uh, under really tragic conditions, they escaped, including Zon Dalama. And so the, many of the older people, but because Tibetans now have a little easier time, but those early Tibetans who came out of the refugees up there suffered so much. So many died in India. 
because of, from the dysentery, from the you know malaria, and they were living in such terrible conditions, you know. And when many people worked on the uh, many even great lamas worked on the you know uh, building road, breaking stones, they suffered in the hands of Chinese, but also as refugees very much. But in all this, the great really men and women and practitioners, they always, you see, they were very still. They always said, just as Buddha taught us that everything is impermanent, they said, what happening to us is this great impermanence. So in fact, they were inspired by that. And really, you know, son, it's so moving, so positive. Incredible to see that. Incredible. So then I attach him to grief, it's losing, the impermanence becomes a consolation, bringing us peace, confidence, fearlessness. And the most important of all, we can see clearly how futile it is to grasp at something which is actually simply ungraspable. Whatever you're grasping on is impermanent. So then, it's kind of quite futile, isn't it? It's like putting your money in the bank that's already bankrupt. Or putting your eggs in the wrong basket. The, the extraordinary thing is that when you do accept death and impermanence, then you realize that actually, you know, when you really accept and distinct, you're not l losing anything at all. In fact, you're gaining everything. You begin to get the bigger picture. It is as if you lose the clouds, but you gain the sky. 